You've, you've really come down on exactly what I wanted to talk about today. So again, I'm a manufacturer. Yes, I haven't manufactured anything as complex as a bot, but I've got a lot of experience in manufacturing. And my two questions are, let's start with the first one first, and that is... It seems to me that the whole idea of, of Tesla is that even on a amazingly huge and complex product like an automobile, they got their form factor, they have a basic form factor, and they're willing to iterate on that form factor in mm -hmm. major ways, basically on a day-to-day -day basis, according to everything that we understand. They'll change a part out, they'll change, they'll make, they'll go back and have a, a get a new new part molded and, and, and just come in and put it online and make sure that it's operating, you know, in in real time the bot as complex as it is is nowhere near as complex as an automobile doesn't have all mm -hmm. the issues with wiring harnesses all over the place all the kinds of things we're talking about how how finished does the bot have to be to where it wouldn't be possible to make huge changes in line real time like they do on the cars i mean why does it have to be so final before they can set up a line and start producing. I, I guess it doesn't have to be so final. You, you just probably want to make sure you, your hand is right, that you've got the right kind of actuators, that uh, the thing's not going to break down. And, and it may be that you, you suddenly realize that the, the whole approach you're taking to a certain arm or something like that um, is wrong and you, you want to modify that. But I think they're getting very, very close. You know, some of the questions like, do we need sensors or do we not need sensors? Right. So, so those could be some of the fundamental questions and the video that was about, well, cause we, we haven't spoken since then. Did we, did we talk about, um, the, the latest Optimus video that came out where Optimus is basically unclothed or unarmored as, um, as, as Herbert would say, um, <laughs> that was about a week ago. Okay. I mean, it's like, it seems like two years ago now, but I think it was only about a week ago. And when you look at that version of the Gen 2 bot, because the first time we just saw like a standard video right. that, you know, went through, was edited and stuff like that, and it was highly polished. But this was in the lab of them doing something that was just on someone's iPhone or Android and posted to social media. Right. I think it might have been Elon's phone, I'm not might sure, been, because yes. he's the one who posted it, right? Um, but in that case, we were seeing all the covers taken a huff which meant we were they were revealing a lot more of what's underneath the skin than before, something that Elon had complained about. Sure, <laughs> sure was yeah. We were stopping from that. But yes. the one takeaway is that we saw the, the previous Gen uh, 1 bot that was being assembled. Remember the two bots are coming and put together? Yes. And you could see like, there's like all kinds of stuff hanging out and everything. And, and it didn't look cleaned up. It looked like, wow, it was quite a mess in there. And then you look at this, like, wow, that's really refined. Everything is just like so clean that now I see why Elon keeps on referring to it. Remember, he, he used the term three times in the meeting. He, he called it a product, the Optimus product. Oh, yes, you know, yes, it's yes. one of the, you know, the most interesting products. It's like, wow. Yes. Like, you know, that's an interesting term to, to refer to it as a, you know, a product as opposed to a, a project or something like that. Right. And then when you look at it, you say, yeah, it, it looks so refined right now. It feels like it's something that's very close to getting ready to scale up. And I agree that, you know, the refinements that you might do when you start scaling it is that, oh, you know, what do we do to change the actuator lines so we're pumping out more actuators right? or, or doing them cheaper or maybe getting a little bit more functionality in there or we've discovered, ah, oh, there's a slight flaw in how the actuators are working, we want to improve them. So you would see that, but I think in the grand scale, it's not going to be a huge change. It, you know, they're probably very close to being able to do it. If you happen to be a big fan of the Cybertruck, you might also be interested in this super fun Cybertruck refrigerator magnet and bottle opener. It is made out of super thick stainless steel, just like the Cybertruck. And it has this giant magnet on the back, so it's gonna hold a lot of stuff on your refrigerator. It's an amazing gift and it comes in that great gift box that you saw before uh, that uses a magnet opener, just almost like an Apple box, you know, like when you get Apple products. You can buy it on Amazon for $29.95 or you can buy it direct from me by sending $25 to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters. Please indicate whether you want the stainless steel look 
or maybe you'd like to have this very clever camo version. And then if you're not in the US, please add $20 for freight. If you'd like more than one, please check the information below to get pricing as well as all that information I just told you will be repeated in the information below. So once again, think about joining the channel, getting the up-to-date Tesla news every single day. I think you'll be glad you did.